So far, all the formulas we've dealt with have assumed that the outcomes in the sample space were equally likely so that the exact probabilities could be calculated for the events. Now, real probabilities are often not so tidy. Instead, we often rely upon statistics to calculate out empirical probabilities. So here I have a table, and this table lists out Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines, and also officers, enlisted, cadets, and midshipmen. What's in this table is of the 198,420 female military personnel in the September of 1998, this table tells me what were their ranks and in what branches of the military they were in. And what I want to do is use that table to ca calculate out some probabilities. So to calculate probabilities empirically, we're going to rely upon the relative frequency to estimate the values. So if we were to select a female service person randomly of that group, the probability of enlisted in the Army, well, what I would have to do is I'd have to go find out how many of those women were enlisted people in the Army, and then go ahead and divide that by the total. So enlisted women who were in the Army were 60,787. So I would go ahead and figure out the relative frequency. So I'd take 60,787 and divide it by 198,420. That, that fraction would be the probability that if I selected a female service person at randomly in September of 1998, they would be an enlisted person in the Army. Now we can do the same thing for officers except now we have to figure out how many officers there were and divide it by the total number of women who were enlisted. So in our table, the officers could be in the Army, Air Force, Navy, or Marines. So I have to go ahead and take 10,367 along with 11,971, 7,777, and 854. And then I have to figure out the relative frequency with that. So I add those numbers together, I divide it by the total number of female service persons, which was 198,420, and that gives me the fraction 30,969 divided by 198,420. Now if I were to do this for Marines, so I wanted to know the probability that a female service person was a Marine, I'd go back to my table, and now I will find the Marines in here, so 854 plus 8,928 plus 0, and then I'd figure out my relative frequency with those numbers. So when I add those values together, I get 9,782, and if I divide that by the total number of service persons, which was 198,420, that fraction would give me the probability. Notice all of these things were based on statistics. That's why we're talking about empirical probability. And it's often a little bit confusing to students. The way you can distinguish it is if we were thinking about the probability of getting heads when you flip a coin, well, if you think of in terms of outcomes, there's two possible outcomes of those. One of those is heads. If we say the probability is one half, that's doing normal probability using the definition. If we were to go ahead and flip that coin a thousand times and find out that 500 of those times we got heads, we'd say the probability is 500 over a thousand or one half. If we're using the statistics of flipping many, many, many times, then we're doing it by empirical probability. And if we do the, the experiment enough times, we should find that those two values, the way we get it theoretically from the outcomes or statistically, uh, using empirical probability, they should be approximately the same thing.